in Yale as a child, my family would make Indian goodies. My grandmother would bring out her recipe written over 50 years ago. The notepad al always had notes on all of the margins. Make sure you put this in force. Don't put this ingredient with this ingredient. We would then get to a point in the recipe where my grandmother would stop us and say, hold on, this may or may not work. Why? I would ask. She said it depends on the folding. If it is not folded correctly, the cake would not have the correct consistency and it would not rise. I wanted to know why. Since then, I've gained a love for cooking and creating my own recipes. However, I've had my fair share of kitchen disasters. Last summer, I decided to make blue corn muffins. I had no experience with blue corn, but I decided to just try. I also decided to add only one tablespoon of sugar because I thought the cinnamon I put in it would even out the taste. Not only did they taste horrible, but they were hard as a rock. Although the muffins were a failure, I was fascinated. What caused the muffins to be so hard? I figured out that day that it all came down to science. Just as scientists often have to repeat their experiments, I repeated my recipe over a dozen times until I, like a scientist, had a conclusive answer. I figured out that sugar is an important structural element in muffins. It not only retains moisture, but it also prevents gluten buildup. I started researching all my kitchen fairs, which in turn started my food science blog, OTM. I shared my, I shared my fairs and people started asking questions, such as these on the screen. How does bread rise? How, what, what's an instant pot? What is freezer bone? The key ingredient in all these questions people were sending me was simple, science. Cooking is pure chemistry. So understanding the chemical reactions in cooking allows you to be a more confident chef. Roast meat is a fantastic illustration of numerous chemical processes. If the recipe asks you to add salt before cooking your meat, it is because of the salt ability to take out moisture to give the surface a slight crunch. When you put the roast meat into the oven, it starts to brown and emit an odor into the oven. This is the Maillard reaction in action. In the Maillard reaction, proteins and sugars bind together with heat and start to detach from the chemical fragments and gives your meat flavor, odor, and color. Just from this simple dish, you can already learn numerous chemical processes and the reason behind certain steps in a recipe. Another example is scrambled eggs. There are two main parts of an egg, the egg yolk and the egg white albumin. The egg yolk contains all the, all the fat of the egg. The egg white contains the proteins. These two components have two different cooking temperatures. So it's essential for you to completely combine the two components to a homogenous mixture so that there's an even cooking temperature. The best equipment for this is a whisk because it not only allows for an even scramble, but it also adds air into your mixture. A skillet or pan is the, best, is the best equipment to heat your eggs because it allows for an even cooking temperature. It limits the overexposure of heat, which can damage the proteins in the eggs. When you start to heat your eggs, the heat causes the proteins to unfold the tightly bounded amino acid through a, pro through a process of protein denaturation. The water is forced out and you're left with your perfect breakfast. Just from the simple meal, you could already learn about diffusion of heat homogenous mixtures, and protein denaturation. Just as science explains cooking, cooking explains science. You practice the scientific, scientific method of quantifying, processing, and identifying your ingredient to have your finished result. Through cooking, scientists can practice the scientific method and become more curious thinkers. If you just accepted the results and never asked why, Deep research could never have been conducted and delectable dishes could never have been created. Knowing the science behind, behind cooking allows you to be a more confident chef. Being more confident allows you to be allows you to understand why certain ingredients go with what and allows you to be more comfortable, comfortable in the kitchen. I believe that the biggest thing that you can learn in the kitchen is that sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you'll overcook your steak, burn those cookies, or try blue corn muffins only to have it fail miserably, and that's okay. Food and science is all about trial and error. Be curious and ask questions. In the end, if we want more curious thinkers, scientists, and chefs, 
eager to, eager to crush it and not fearful of the failure, head into the kitchen. Family and cooking can only lead to more 